Uh, hey everyone again, it's Pete Croft um, with your another weekly installment of um, some high yield ultrasound uh, cases and teaching. So um, t this week uh, we're going to be talking about lung ultrasounds, my particular favorite um, topic with ultrasound. Um, here are the zones of the lung. So this is um, important to, especially when you're reviewing image. It's not so important acutely because you're doing the ultrasound, you know where you're looking, but when people want to look and find where the corresponding pneumonia or effusion is, it's important for us to know where you are in the chest. And, and this kind of map gives us an idea of that. So there's eight zones and it starts on the right um, and it moves over to the left. So it's pretty self-explanatory, just something to commit to uh, memory. Um, here is a, uh, a uh, utility of lung ultrasound in terms of finding um, simply just lung sliding. It, it can be done in a second or two and can rule out a pneumothorax better than a supine x-ray. As I think you guys are aware of, um, the uh, one thing I will say here is that you, you always want to try to use the anterior portion of the chest. It's where air rises, so if you have a pneumothorax, the most sensitive areas are going to be uh, parasternally on the left and parasternally on the right. Um, the left can be tricky with the heart, so as you can see, Scott here is actually moving up towards uh, the clavicle to gain this image. Here on the left is the corresponding image with the ribs, rib shadows. They call this the bat sign, B-A-T, because it looks like a flying bat. I can't really see that, but, you know, that's what they call it. So here's your, right away, you know they're sliding. You can do M-mode if you want. You don't necessarily need to. Uh, I think you can safely see they're sliding here tricks you can do to improve this is just if you turn up your gain actually it helps see this uh, sliding of uh, lung so next patient you have with that just try with try, try changing the gain up and down to give yourself a, a good view and you'll see what I mean as you can see we're really shallow 3.7 centimeters and we're using the uh, vascular um, uh, high frequency probe <laughs> here's lung sliding again the bat sign ribs on each side with sliding and here's some little comet tails. These aren't V lines, these are just comet tails, and these are normal, um, normal artifacts. Soft tissue here, pleural line here, uh, parietal pleura, visceral pleura, lung sliding, normal. If you want to confirm with M mode, and that's your, your thing, and you like doing that, you click M mode, here's how you do it. Uh, here's Scott uh, doing this on the machine clicking M mode through, his, uh, gets his line, his vertical line where he wants it, and that vertical line corresponds to this. As you can see here, the plural line is here on M mode. It's here in B mode. 3.7 corresponds to 3.7, so every structure here corresponds to a structure here. And this is called your seashore sign because it looks like a beach with the waves coming in. Next up, uh, in terms of normal ultrasounds, um, we talked about in one of the previous installments about how the lung is, is when it's aerated, you can't see anything. So when you're seeing anything, you know it's abnormal. This kind of shows that uh, to a good degree. He's, uh, we're using the, the low frequency probe here, and we're staying at a depth of about 18, which is generally considered, considered the depth to stay at when you're looking for pulmonary edema. Um, it's, this is a great image because you can see what's called A-lines all the way down. So A-line is basically an artifact that emanates from the pleural line and the surface of the, uh, the probe, and it's the same distance between the surface and the pleural line, and this is basically an artifact that is mimicked at this level and mimicked at this level, all the way down to the bottom. And that's normal. That's normal lung sliding without any pulmonary edema, and there's no consolidation seen there. Here are normal images of all uh, four zones, and as you can see where the probe is being held in each of these zones. Let's go over some abnormal. So here's some pathologic images for you guys. This is a pneumothorax. This is uh, M mode. As you can see, um, the, the beach is gone, and it's filled up with just called a barcode sign, so there's no differentiation at the plural line to suggest any sort of or remnant of lung sliding. So this is an abnormal uh, uh, picture and should should highlight and lead you to thinking that this is a pneumothorax. 
Um, along those same lines, if you see something uh, like this, you're seeing some sliding in some areas. Uh, there's your ribs on the right and left here. Um, and here's your lung coming in here. What you don't see is any sliding here. And this is actually called the lung point sign, um, which is extremely specific for uh, pneumothorax. Um, I always look for this whenever I find a pneumothorax. There's no rhyme or reason or guidelines to show you how big a pneumothorax is by ultrasound. But if you go up and down the whole chest and you're not seeing a lung point, then um, bets are that this is a pretty big uh, pneumothorax. Whereas if you if you can find the lung point fairly high up in the chest, um, you know, bets are that it's very it's smaller. Now, again, I, I will say that there's no data there um, to follow, but I always will look for this lung point uh, during my studies. Now, this is an interesting finding. So this is, as you can see, the, the lung, and, and this is... Uh, uh, M mode here, there is what looks to be a beach, right? A beach here, and um, the waves coming in here, which correspond to soft tissue and lungs. So the lung appears to be there. However, what you don't see is a ton of sliding. What this actually corresponds to is the heartbeat. As you can see here, if you remember with like fetal heart tones, you're measuring, and this looks fairly similar to that. This um, is a patient that either has a right main stem intubation or has a, um, has had a, um, pleuridesis on one side or just is holding their breath you can actually mimic or uh, show this uh, sign on ultrasound it's kind of a neat way to to look at someone's pulse um, a trick to do that and as well as um, uh, help you with uh, clinically if you're if you're worried about deep intubations or um, not aerating both lungs um, this what I mean by that is if you're if you have a patient uh, that you intubated that's hypoxic and you put the probe in their chest they have nice sliding here in the right and really nothing here in the left that should make you think that you you've done a right main stem intubation so you need to pull that tube back and re-ultrasound them to show that the tube is in a good spot now you're going to get an x-ray because that's what the admitting team wants and you know it, it will show you kind of where it is in the in the chest and how far how far up from the crina but this is a quick and dirty way to make sure uh, that you're in the right spot, you know, acutely right at the bedside. This represents an esophageal intubation. So if you intubate, their sats don't come up. You can, there are good studies to show putting the probe actually on the trachea. You can see that and watch the tube go through. Or if you didn't do that, you can simply put it in the chest and see that there's um, no lung sliding, that you get this lung pulse sign, um, and you know you're in the wrong spot. Um, here's some more pathology. This is zone 7, nicely labeled, nicely labeled here, nicely labeled. Um, so this is up in the left axilla, kind of left armpit, um, corresponding rib, rib, and these are just florid beelines. So beelines are basically an artifact created by uh, interstitial fluid, or it can be created by pneumonia, which we'll go through soon. But basically, um, uh, our artifacts that emanate from either the pleural surface or from consolidated lung that transcend all the way down to the bottom of the screen. Um, and as you see here, they obscure all any any signs of an A-line or that, that artifact we talked about earlier. Um, and this should make you think, especially if it's diffuse of pulmonary edema, if it's localized, other things should come to mind, um, which we'll talk about. But this is a severe, severe posit severely positive um, exam. Here's your differential. Again, diffuse florid pulmonary edema. Every zone you put your probe in, you will see that pattern. Um, you can see it in pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, you can see it with pneumonia, especially unilaterally. And ARDS um, will give you this uh, beeline pattern and picture as well. 79-year-old um, female came in acutely to acute. Uh, moderate respiratory distress, wheezing all over. The resident ordered NEBS or the PA or the uh, attending physician. Doesn't matter. Somebody ordered NEBS. Um, and then they did an ultrasound and they found this and quickly realized that the NEBS aren't probably going to help. Um, the uh, patient has florid B lines, which we just saw there, on both the right and the left. 
as well as large pleural effusions. And as you can see here, there's some consolidation of this lung. And these down here in the bottom, in the bottom left of your screen, these are beelines coming right from the pneumonia or air bronchograms. This makes me think that the patient is both, you know, has ARDS, has paraneumonic effusions, or a fluid overload with a concomitant uh, pneumonia here. Um, so this patient needs positive pressure ventilation, probably some diuresis, um, and nitroglycerin, um, and maybe some antibiotics depending on the you know, overall clinical picture of the patient um, given this exam. Um, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Again, this is your right upper quadrant. You can see the bile ducts or some ducts in here. As you know, this is the liver, kidney, probes pointing towards the head. The head's up here, feet down here, spine, sign is here. You know something's abnormal. In this case, you can see some of the lung flapping. You can see a big effusion here as well. Or blood. Um, more representations of pleural effusions in basically all uh, zones here. So this is above the spleen or the left upper quadrant. This is actually, as you can tell here, really shallow. This is using a high frequency probe. And this is lungs sliding back and forth, but the effusion is so big that it's come up uh, right near the surface. Uh, this dark area here corresponds to your effusion. This is your lung sliding. This is, again, DTA here and the effusion behind the DTA, not tracking in front, so you know this is a big pleural effusion. Uh, this is a sub xiphoid view, which you're actually seeing is an effusion on the right side here. Here's your liver, here's your heart, and the effusion's so big you're actually seeing it in this view. And lastly, we looked at this earlier, um, a nice consolidated atelectatic lung with fibrinous strands and a concomitant effusion. Notice the spine, see it here, you know something's going on. Hope that helps with the lung. Uh, next we'll be moving on uh, to the aorta and the IVC. Thanks.